Today we want to preach on the subject, words which the Holy Ghost teaches. And my text is coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and beginning to read in verse 8. No, let's back up a little more. Verse 6. How be it, we speak wisdom, say wisdom. Wisdom. Among those who are perfect or complete. How many know we're perfect and complete in Jesus? Amen. Somebody said, well, we won't be perfected until Jesus comes back. Physically, we're waiting for a physical transformation, but spiritually we are already perfect in the sight of God. Amen. We speak wisdom among those who are perfect. Somebody protests. My protest and say, Paul said, not as though I already perfect or had yet attained. What was he referring to? If you read it in his context, he was talking about the glorification of his body. Yes. His body wasn't yet Correct. transformed. He wasn't talking about spiritual perfection. He was talking about physical, tangible glorification. Yes. Just in case there's somebody that wants to brand me as teaching fallacy. Paul is the one who says it here in 1 Corinthians. <laughs> I didn't write this. He said, we speak wisdom among those who are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world. Say it, not the wisdom of this world. Not the wisdom of this world. Now the wisdom of this world misinterprets everything it reads in the Word of God because the Word of God was written by the Holy Spirit and it is spiritually discerned or understood. Hallelujah. Which means if you don't have the Spirit, you cannot understand the language or the words that God uses. In fact, you will interpret them just the opposite of what they really mean. And we'll get into that in just a little bit. He said... Not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God. Say it, the wisdom of God. In a mystery. It's mysterious to the outsiders. The uninitiated. The unconverted. He said... But we speak the wisdom of God, verse 7, in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained or appointed or planned or schemed before the world. Before Genesis 1-1. Before the world, unto what? Our glory. How many know that God ordained that we should be glorified. For our glory, to, for us to glory in. Hallelujah. Now, we need to take this in as it is written. Which none of the princes, verse 8, which none of the princes of the, the wisdom, which none of the princes of this world knew. Their education did not give them this wisdom, no matter how highly educated they may have been. Otherwise, he said, for had they known it, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. You see, the fact that Jesus of Nazareth was the Lord of glory was hidden to them. Their eyes could not see. Their ears could not hear. Caiaphas and Annas could not see their Messiah, could not recognize the Messiah. He came unto his own, and his own didn't receive him. Why? Because they didn't have the wisdom revealed yes. to the heart by God. But Peter saw, a fisherman saw, whereas the high priests of Jerusalem could not see. Because when Jesus asked him, whom do you say that I am? He said, you are the Christ. You are the Messiah, the Mashiach. Glory. Ben Elohim, the son of the living God, the son of God. <laughs> and Jesus said, you are happy, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. Amen. You see, if Peter spoke Aramaic, he said, 
You are the Mashiach in Hebrew. Ben Elohim or Bar Elohim or Bar Elah the Son of God. And Jesus said, you are Bar Jonah. You are the Son of Jonah. I know who you are. Mm -hmm. And you know who I am. My sheep hear my voice and they know me. Thank God Peter was one of Jesus' sheep. Amen? Yes, amen. amen. If you're one of Jesus' sheep, then you know the truth of who Jesus is. Yes. That he is Bar El or Bar Elohim or Bar Elah. He is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. The living God. Now let's look at this. Verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard. He's talking about natural people, the, the unconverted. Their eyes cannot see what God has prepared for those who love Him. Their ear cannot take in what God has prepared for those who love Him. It, because it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, unconverted man, yes. the things that God has prepared for those who love him, but God has revealed them to us. Amen. Amen. Our eyes see. He said, Blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Yes. And he began to talk about many sages and, and, and mm -hmm. men of old desired to see the things that you see yes. and to hear the things that you hear and weren't allowed to, weren't able to. Think how privileged we are. Think how privileged you are that our eyes see, our ears hear, and our hearts receive and understand what the Word of God is really talking about. And we'll get into what we're talking about in just a moment here. Okay, for he says, verse 10, But God has revealed these things, the things He has prepared for those who love Him, to us. How? Three words. By His Spirit. Say it, by His Spirit. By his spirit. You have to have the Spirit to have this revelation. You have to have the Spirit to see, to hear, to receive, and understand what God is really saying. Amen. And many of there are who don't have the Spirit, who cannot see what God is revealing, who cannot hear what God is saying, or they hear it, but they don't understand. There's a difference between hearing something and understanding what you're hearing. God has revealed them to us by His Spirit, for the ser Spirit searches all things. Yeah. Say it, all things. all things. As we have said in the time past in another message, the all things are our inheritance. Mm -hmm. We don't inherit some things. God hasn't prepared for His loved ones certain things, but God has prepared for us all things, whether life or death or things present or things to come. He said, whether Cephas or Apollos or Paul, whoever it is, He said, all things are yours. Amen. And the New Testament, the New Covenant parallels or patterns the Old Covenant. Abraham gave unto his son Isaac all that he had. Mm -hmm. The father gave to the firstborn or to the son all things. Yes. <laughs> and Jesus, knowing the supper being ended in the book of John, knowing that the Father had given all things, say it, all things, all things. Into, his into his hands. This is the inheritance, the rightful inheritance of the joint heirs with Christ, the equal heirs with Christ. God the Father placed all things into Christ's hands, and because we are equal heirs with Jesus, all things belong to us. Hallelujah. Are you glad that you have all things? Mm -hmm. How can you then be poor? Though, though, he, you know, though he was rich, yet he came down to earth and became poor for us, so that we through his poverty might be poor. No, so that we through his poverty might be rich. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Don't say I'm not rich. Come on. I am rich. Amen. Amen. And these riches are, do not consist simply of finances, material things, but supernatural and spiritual things. Yeah. Authority over demons, authority over sickness, authority over all things. Mm -hmm. 
Hallelujah. For when Adam came into the world, he, had, he was the ruler over three realms. Mm -hmm. Air, land, and sea. Yes. The fowls of the air, the beasts of the field, mm -hmm. and the fishes of the sea. Mm -hmm. The first man was the king over the earth. He had authority over birds. He had authority over fish. He had authority over land animals. He called the land animals to him, and he named them. Amen. They obeyed him. Mm -hmm. Everything obeyed him. He was the first Adam, the first king. But he gave up his crown. As it says in the book of Lamentations, our crown has fallen from our head. The human race lost its crown because Adam forfeited it to the devil. And Adam, who was the God, little g, of this planet, yes, gave it to the devil. And the devil became the God of this world. The God of this social system. This social system that we're living in does not operate by the wisdom of God, but by the wisdom of carnal, fallen humans. All right. How do we know the last Adam became the new king? He had authority over air, land, and sea. He spoke to the wind, the air, peace be still, and the weather patterns obeyed his voice. Yes. He was coming back as the last Adam, the second man, and the last Adam. You see, there were many men born from the first Adam, but they weren't the second man. Not until the Messiah came was he now called man number two. Because man number one failed. Yes. And so everything that came out of man number one, the first Adam, was not in the image of God. Yes, sir. Amen. But when the last Adam came, the second man, mm -hmm. the second yes. real God-ordained, God-designed type of man, yes. in his image and his likeness, mm -hmm. Because Jesus was the very exact image of God. Not a similar image, but the exact same image of God. And so now God was being seen in a human being for the second time. The first time he was seen in the first Adam. who was made in the likeness and the image of God. But he lost that image. And then from then on, everybody was born in the image of Father Adam. But now we are born from above, by the last Adam, the second man. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He had authority over the air. He had authority over the sea. Mm -hmm. The fish wouldn't go into Peter's net until Jesus said when. Amen. Amen? Yes, sir. We could go on. Mm -hmm. That's not what I'm preaching about today, but I guess it is Hallelujah. to a degree. God has revealed these things to us by His Spirit. How do you get that understanding, Reverend Ashmore? Yeah. By the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gets it from the revelation of the Word. But many people read the Word and don't get that revelation because they're blind. They can't hear and they can't see the things that God is saying in His book. Amen. He says, verse 12, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, which interprets God's words differently than God does, but the, but the Spirit which is from God, of God. Why? Why did God give us His Spirit? So that we might know. Say it, so that I might know. Not wonder, not think, not hope, but know. Amen. The things that God has freely given us. Say it, freely given us. Which, verse 13, things, things, say it, things. things. We're talking about supernatural things. Mm -hmm. We're speaking about supernatural realities. Yes. We're talking about supernatural definitions and words. Mm -hmm. What does it say? Which things also we speak. They don't speak it because they don't know it. We speak not in the words that man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. We're talking this morning about words that the Holy Ghost defines. Mm -hmm. We don't go to Webster's to find these definitions because they'll give us man's definition of certain words. But we go to the Holy Ghost who gives us the definitions in God's dictionary. Yeah. Look at this. 
Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual, but the natural man doesn't receive the things of the Spirit of God because they are foolishness to him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually defined. Spiritually understand. You can't spiritually understand a word unless you know its definition. Yes. Okay. Now what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about spiritual definitions of words. Now, in the book of Revelation, we have <laughs> glorious promises given to the church in the first three chapters. Mm -hmm. In 1 John... 5.4, before we get into Revelation, John gives us a definition of a word. Say the word overcome. Overcome. Overcometh. Overcometh. Overcomer. Overcomer. Now, most people define that word overcome or to overcome something means that they have put up a struggle, they have put up a fight until they vanquish and accomplish their enemy's defeat. They are doing the fighting. They are doing all, putting in all the effort to overcome or to conquer. Mm -hmm. That's the humanistic, the human carnal understanding of the word overcome. Now look at God's definition of overcome. In 1 John 5, 4, For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world, yes. conquers the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our determination, no. Even our fighting, no. Even our struggling, no. Our what? Faith. What is the definition of conquer and overcome by the, by the Spirit's definition? The word overcome and conquer is defined by the Holy Ghost. A word which the Holy Ghost teaches us means faith. Are you listening now? Faith doesn't require any struggle on our part because faith takes place in the heart. It has nothing to do with our hands. It has nothing to do with our feet. It has to do with an attitude of the heart. I receive and accept what God says. That's faith. Amen. Okay? And then he says... In 1 John 5, 5. Who is he that overcometh the world? Amen. He that believeth. Yes. What is the meaning of overcome? Believe. You mean I simply get saved and conquer the devil in the world the moment I believe on Jesus? That's exactly what John says. The fight is over. Jesus did all, Jesus put in all the effort. He put in all the struggle. He did all the fighting. Yes. And then he conquered the devil and the world and was crowned by God. Yes. And he just shares his crown out with you and me. Hallelujah. Not because we did any fighting, but because he did all the fighting. We simply accept the outcome by faith. So, this is the victory that overcometh the world. Our sweat, no. Our tears, no. Our struggling, no. Our agonizing, no. Our fight, no. Our faith. Amen. The word overcome means to believe. So, if you believe, then you've already conquered the world. Hallelujah. Revelation 2.7. Now, let's look at the promise. The Holy Ghost. He that has an ear... Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. In Revelation 2, 7, he said, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Who is this overcomer? You believe. The believer. We could reread this as he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to us. Mm -hmm. To him that believeth on Jesus Christ and what he did to save us, I will give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Revelation 2.11. Let's look at the next promise in Revelation. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. He that overcometh, he that believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. 
shall not be heard of the second death. Hallelujah. Promise number three, Revelation 2.17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches, to him that overcometh. To him that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. <laughs> I will give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saveth he that but receiveth it. Revelation 2.26, And he that overcometh, and keepeth my works unto the end. Now, get this. Look very closely. He that overcometh, he that believes, and keeps his works? No. My works. My works. Who's speaking? Jesus. Jesus, through the Spirit. What do we keep? The works of Jesus. I keep His death, His burial, and His resurrection as my sole hope, my sole belief, my sole faith, my sole ground of salvation is in what He did, the good news. Amen. <laughs> We're talking about how the Holy Ghost interprets Scripture, how the Holy Ghost teaches Scripture. Okay, so Revelation 2.26 might read like this or be defined as this. He who believes on the Son of God, Jesus Christ, and keeps his works, Jesus' works, my works, to the end, to him will I give power over the nations, authority over the nations. Now, we read in, in Ephesians chapter 2, what does it say? Let's, let's note something here. In Ephesians chapter 2, he says that verse 8, For by grace you are saved, not were, are. By grace you are saved through believing. Amen. Through what? Believing. Faith. What saves a person? Faith. Faith. What conquers the world? Faith conquers the world. Faith in Jesus Christ is what conquers the world. Okay, for by grace you are saved, not by works, not by effort, not by struggling. God does the saving, you don't. You are saved through faith and that not of yourself, say it, not of myself. It is the gift of God. Not of works. Why? So that no one can brag. So that nobody can boast. If you're, if we are saved today by believing in what Jesus did on the cross. Not by anything we have done. For all man's righteousnesses are as filthy rags in God's sight. And so all we do is come to the Lord and say, Lord, I can't save myself. You do the saving. You do the keeping. You preserve me. That's faith. That's The moment you do that, you have overcome the world. You become a conqueror in God's sight. Faith conquers. Verse 10, for we are our workmanship. No, His workmanship. We are a product of His hands. Yes, amen. Look at this. Created unto good works. What good works? Which God hath before appointed that we should walk in them. God appointed the good works. Yeah. God did the good works. We simply walk in what God has done. Are you listening now? Give the Lord a round of applause if you believe it. Hallelujah. That's why so many people don't know the don't get saved because preachers get up and tell them if you don't stop sinning you're not going to be saved. If you don't change your ways you're not going to be saved. No, 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 no. That's not the gospel. The good news is simply believe on the Lord Jesus Christ in his ways and he will save you. You can't save yourself. You don't have enough strength to reform or transform your own life. But when you start believing that God will do it in you, Jesus comes in, His Spirit comes in, and all things suddenly pass away. You don't pass them away. He passes them away. And all things are suddenly become brand new. How? Because you have faith in Jesus. 
the love of Christ which passes human knowledge which passes human experience no one has ever experienced the love of God like he can give apart from God and only God can show you that love and God loves the worst and the lowest of us God loves the worst of mankind God doesn't turn his back on fallen man he came down dressed up like a human and came down and reached into our nasty pit and picked us up and saved us. Oh, hallelujah. All glory goes to Jesus. Through his death, his burial, and his resurrection on the third day. Hallelujah. And so we're going to look at words how the Holy Ghost teaches. Words which the Holy Ghost teaches. How does, he, how does the Holy Ghost define overcome? Belief. Belief. Amen. How does he define works? Okay, before I get to works, let's look at another definition of the word overcomer. Revelation 3.12 Him that overcometh, him that believeth, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem will be written on us because we are new citizens. Yes, amen. New creatures are the new citizens of the new Jerusalem, not the old Jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my God and I will write upon him my new name. Everything is new. All things are pa old things are passed away. All things are become new. We get his new name. We get the new city's name. Yes. Revelation 3:21. To him that overcometh believeth on the son of God. I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am sat down with my Father in his throne. <laughs> Jesus has granted that everybody who believes on him into salvation is suddenly seated with him at his right hand, at God's right hand, and in his Father's throne. Think about that. We're not just in Christ's throne, but Christ's throne is his Father's throne. How they share the throne. We share the throne with Jesus, who shares the throne with his Father. Are you listening now? As Jesus shares the throne with his Father, we share the throne with Jesus. We are seated together in heavenly places. Where? In Christ Jesus. Look at this. Now we go on. Revelation. 21 verse 7 he that overcometh shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son who is he that overcometh he that gets saved by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. the jailer at Philippi said what must I do to be saved Paul said believe yes. believing saves you write your name in the Lamb's book of life now let's look at this we're, so we see that overcome in the scripture is translated or defined by the Holy Spirit as believe. Amen. To overcome is to believe. So how does the Holy Ghost o define overcome? Words which the Holy Ghost teaches, not man. We look at man's definition of overcome. Again, we see struggle and fighting and trying to, to conquer our enemy. No, Jesus did all the fighting, all the struggle, and did the conquering of the devil. And he shares his crown in victory with us. So how do we become victorious over the devil? By believing in what he did. Yes. That's the Holy Ghost definition. Amen. Okay. So now, let's look at the word works. <laughs> Let's look at the word. How does the Holy Ghost define the word work in the Bible? Okay. Man defines work as effort, doing, sweating, working hard. And, and, and so people who don't understand grace, that's how they define the Bible's word work. Faith without work, works, is dead, they say. 
But yet, the scripture tells us that Abraham believed God. Say it, believed God. And his believing was accounted to him for righteousness. Why? Because the Holy Ghost defines believing as righteousness. What makes you righteous? If you believe in Jesus, God sees you as righteous. Because Abraham believed God, though he came out of a pagan city, yet Abraham was viewed by God as righteous because Abraham worked hard no believe. because Abraham believed God Amen. I believe God I don't believe what men tell me I believe what God tells me Amen. men will tell me I'm lost men will tell me I'm no good yeah. but God tells me you are my child I have begotten you by my spirit I wash you in my blood you are no longer part of this society. You are in my society. You are citizens of the kingdom. You are citizens of the new Jerusalem, which cometh down from God out of heaven. Blessed is he that overcometh. In other words, blessed is he that believed. Amen. For there shall be a performance of those things. As the angel Gabriel told Miriam, he said, blessed is she who believed, for there shall be a performance of those things. Yeah. Not her performance. She simply believed God did the performing. Amen? Amen? Mm -hmm. We're the audience. God is the, the actor on the stage. God is the one doing the acts. God is the one working the miracles. Yes. Okay. So the word work is defined by Jesus and the Holy Spirit when they came to Christ and they said... Master, what shall we do that we might do the works of God? The works. We want to do something. Yes. We want works. Glory. Jesus said, this is the work of God. Not your work, God's work. Yes, yes. That you believe. Yes. <laughs> How does the Holy Ghost define the word work? Believe. How does the Holy Ghost define the word conquer? Believe. It's all by faith from beginning to end. We go from faith to works. No, we go from faith to faith. The Christian life consists of faith to faith to faith to faith. From grace to grace to grace to grace. From glory to glory to glory to glory. Hallelujah. And so the Holy Ghost, as we're viewing and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, the, Paul said the Holy Ghost is changing us into His image. Yes. Who? The Lord of glory. He's transforming us from glory to glory. From one glory to the next glory. It never goes below glory. It's always in glory. Hallelujah. So, God defines looking at Jesus, gazing at Jesus, studying Jesus with eyes that see from a heart that has the revelation of who Jesus is. As we behold the Son of God who conquered all things on the cross for us, even the devil, our arch enemy, as we behold him as he is, as we see him as he is, the Holy Ghost works the miracle of transformation and we begin to shine like Jesus. We begin to, to reflect the glory of the Mashiach, the Messiah of God, and His glory shines from our faces because we have a heart that has perceived Him, ears that hear and understand Him. Hallelujah! That is what transforms us. That's what we overcome by, by believing on Messiah, by believing in Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed art thou, church. Mm -hmm. For flesh and blood isn't revealing this to you. Amen. But my Father which is in heaven, Jesus said. Yes, Hallelujah. The fisherman said, Peter said, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Notice Jesus amen. didn't confess Jesus to be the Father. Yes, amen. It was the Father who revealed to Peter that Jesus was the Son of God. Not the Father. Jesus wasn't the Father. Jesus was the Son of God. Amen. As John wrote plainly and clearly in the Word, he said, the We have believed and do testify that the Father didn't come, but the Father said, and the Son to be the Savior of the world. Amen. 
If the Father had come to be the Savior of the world, as some believe, that the Father became the Son, then now we have a Son with no Father. Mm -hmm. Oh, before He became the Son, we have a Father with no Son. But in the Old Testament, the writer said in the book of Proverbs, who hath gathered the wind in his fist? Who hath created all the ends of the earth? What is his name yeah. and what is his son's name? God had a son in the Old Testament. Amen. Before Jesus of Nazareth was born. Yes. He was the son of God. Mm -hmm. Then he became the son of man through the womb of the virgin Miriam or Mary. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. So, we have to understand the words which the Holy Ghost teaches Amen. and not what men teach. All right, so the word work is defined by Christ as believe. This is the work, the work of God, that you believe on Him whom God has sent, and that Him is the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a round of applause if you believe it. So overcome is defined by the Holy Ghost as believe. Work is defined by Jesus Christ as believe. And how do we define believe? In the book of Hebrews, he said, we who do be, we who have believed, say believed, believe. enter into his rest. We do enter into God's rest. How? Through faith. And he said that Israel could not enter into that rest because of what? Unbelief. They didn't believe. Faith enters into what? Work? No. Faith enters into struggle? No. Faith enter enters into trying to, to conquer? No. Faith has conquered. Faith has worked. Faith enters into what? Rest. So how do we define faith? Rest. The Holy Ghost defines rest as believe. Mm -hmm. We who have believed have rest. So how do you enter into rest? Not through struggle, not through fighting, not through trying, but through believing. Amen. We who have believed do enter into his rest. As he said, if they shall enter into my rest, although his works were finished. Say it, finished. Amen. How many believe God's work is already finished? Yes, amen. Amen. When God finished creating the heavens and the earth, he said in chapter 2, verse 1 of Genesis, thus all the heavens and the earth amen. were finished. Yeah. God finished the work of creation. And what did Jesus cry about the work of salvation on the cross? It is finished. finished. The same God who finished the work of creation finished the work of salvation. There is nothing left for you or me to add to his work. All we can do now is just accept, receive, and believe that it's all finished. Amen. Give the Lord another round of applause if you believe. You see, once you begin to believe this, the struggle's over. There's no more heartache. There's no more sweat. <laughs> Hallelujah. As we said before, in the, book, in, in, the, in the millennial temple, in the book of Ezekiel, it's prophesied that the priest will not wear any garment that causes sweat. Because sweat is a sign of man's curse and his effort. When God told Adam he would, he would work in the sweat of his face. Yeah. Not the sweat of his brow. It said the sweat of his face. Amen. I can't hardly even work in the backyard without sweating, you know. It's just part of the curse. But someday we're not going to sweat anymore. But even now, supernaturally speaking, what is, what is the allegory in that? That there is no sweat to salvation. There is no sweat to being kept. Because He, not we, He is able to keep you from falling. He is able to present you faultless. You're not able to perfect yourself. You're not able to present yourself perfect before God. But He is able to keep us perfect until we see the face of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift your hands.
hands and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Words which the Holy Ghost teaches and not man. Words according to God's definitions, not man's definition. That's why men think they have to work for it. That's why men think they have to fight for it because they don't understand the most basic vocabulary of the Holy Spirit which is defined by the Holy Spirit, by Jesus in the Word of God. What is work? Believing on Him. What is overcoming? Believing on Him. And so the only way to work for God or to, to overcome in this life is to simply believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ in what He did, not what we can do. Amen. Amen. Our assurance our assurance is sealed by Jesus Christ. This is called grace. Grace means you didn't earn it, you didn't work for it, and you couldn't do it. God gave it to you as a gift because you could not earn it. It's not a paycheck, it's a gift. Amen. Well, that's too simple. Yeah, the carnal mind says that's too simple because the carnal man thinks according to carnal terms and carnal definitions, and that's why many believers so-called, or many Christians so-called, or who confess, profess to be believers, don't really believe. I say profess because they don't really, because if they believe, they quit trying. We need to quit trying and start trusting in what Jesus did. Believe on the conqueror and you have conquered. Mm -hmm. Believe on the overcomer and you have already overcome. Amen. All the promises are to the believer, the overcomer. Who's the overcomer? The believer. Who's the believer? The overcomer. It's that simple. Righteousness is accredited to man. And so, as we said a while ago, Abraham believed God, and God counted that righteous. The only, you may be the worst sinner on the face of planet Earth, you may have committed the worst crimes on planet Earth, but when you hear the good news of what God has to tell you, how you can be saved, yes. how even the worst sinner can suddenly become instantly perfect in the sight of God, Amen. and be righteous in the sight of God, not by our understanding, but by his understanding. Amen. Not by our definition, but by God's definitions. Abraham simply believed God, and God looked at him as righteous. Amen. So faith is defined by the Holy Ghost as righteousness. Faith is defined by the Holy Ghost as overcoming. Faith is defined by the Holy Ghost as work. Now, how do we know... You say, well, that's just the opposite of the way we understand these words. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's just, how many know that God is just the opposite of man? Yeah. He defines everything the opposite of the way we define it. That's why when Martha was doing all the hard work and sweating in the kitchen to serve Jesus, Mary was just sitting at his feet. And who did Jesus command? Mary. He said, Mary has chosen that better part. We see two churches in the world today. Those who are slaving away, trying to merit their acceptance with God, and those who simply have already accepted that God accepts them, and they rest at His feet. Sometimes they're doing absolutely nothing in the carnal, in the carnal understanding, but they are doing more for God by soaking in what He is doing, not by what they can do, but by what He is. You rest when you trust fully in what God is doing in your life, just like Mary. Jesus told Martha, you're troubled about many things. People who are in a work salvation are troubled about many things. But those who rest in the grace of Christ, Jesus said, they have chosen that good part, that better part. Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet and lift our hands and thank God for words which the Holy Ghost teaches. Understanding these words as the Holy Ghost defines them. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Lord. Lord, we magnify your name. Lord, cause everyone here that believes on your message, let them know, reveal to them that they are now accepted by you and that they are protected.
protected by you and that you are giving them, you have given them the new birth. They have conquered the world and the devil simply the moment they believed and they are now saints and sons and children of the living God and God longs to dwell in them in all of his fullness and Jesus has come into their heart and purified their hearts by faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 These are they that have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. Hallelujah. These are the overcomers. These are those who can finally rest and realize that it's all in God's hands, not ours. That it's all according to your work and your fight and your, your warfare, Lord Jesus, against Satan at the cross. And then when you said, it is finished, it was and there's nothing left for us to do but believe in what you did for us. You paid for our sins. You suffered our execution that we criminals deserve to be executed. But you took our place and were executed in our stead so that we can go free. And we are now free because you were not held in that prison of death or in the grave. But you came forth alive on the third day, victorious over death and over the devil and over sin and over over the world and we enter in to your inheritance of resurrection ascension life seated at your right hand even now oh hallelujah oh hallelujah 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 if you believe that Jesus has saved you and he has then just lift up your hands your sins are forgiven you this is a declaration of the Holy Spirit the Holy Ghost says he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life is not going to get it but already has everlasting life he that believeth on the Son of God has everlasting life if you believe on Jesus today you have everlasting life the works were finished from the cross Hallelujah, from even from the foundation of the world. God's works are what saved us, not our works. Oh, glory to God. Say it, I am a son of God through Jesus Christ. By believing in his death, burial, and resurrection, my sins are all gone, and God now sees me as pure, holy, and perfect, and righteous. In Christ, I am clothed with Christ's righteousness. I'm clothed and dressed in Jesus' perfection. I'm clothed in Jesus holiness and purity I am saved and I am healed of all disease say it I am healed of all diseases in Christ Christ has no diseases in his glorified body and I am a member of his flesh and of his bones and so therefore all my diseases are healed and gone give God the glory give God the glory give God the glory that your diseases are healed and gone. Give God the glory that your body is glorified with the glory of Jesus' body so that as he is, so are we in this present world. As Jesus is healed, so are we. As Jesus is pure and holy, so are we. As Jesus is seated at the right hand of God, so are we. As he is the Son of God, so are we the sons and daughters of God. As he is, so are we. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And thank you, Father, Abba, Daddy, thank you for seeing us in your Son so that instead of seeing our faults and failures and our weaknesses, you now see Christ's perfections, Christ's attributes, Christ's love and purity and holiness. Oh, Father, we don't see ourselves that way with our natural understanding. But when we take on your understanding and your word, we see how you see us, and that's all that matters. Oh, Father, I'm satisfied that you see me is holy, even though I don't see myself that way. Father, I'm satisfied that you see me as perfect, even though I see myself as flawed. Oh, Father, I thank you that you see me with the eyes of love, and that you see me as your very own loved child. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. By faith, we have overcome our own prejudices, our own interpretations, our own perceptions, our own conceptions our own definitions and we now define ourselves as you define us beloved now behold now we are the sons of God hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah
Hallelujah. John said, Behold, now are we the sons of God. Hallelujah. God doesn't have any flawed sons. God doesn't give birth to defective children. God doesn't give birth to freaks. When he gave us the new birth, we were born in his image and in his likeness. And when were we born again? The moment we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And so when the jailer at Philippi asked Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? Paul gave him the key. Paul gave him the Holy Ghost definition of salvation. He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that we are saved. We're not waiting to be saved. We are saved with so great a salvation. We are not righteous in ourselves, but this is your name according to the prophet, whereby you shall be called the Lord is our righteousness. Lord Jesus, you are my righteousness. Yes, yes. You are my sanctification and you are my redemption. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost definition of redemption is Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost definition of salvation is Jesus Christ. Yes. The Holy Ghost definition of the word sanctification is Jesus Christ. How many know that Jesus Christ is everything? He's all these things to us. Everything that God demands is satisfied in the Christ that's in us. And so God is satisfied with you when he sees Jesus in your heart. For it's Christ inside you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the revelation of your word that liberates us from our own destructions, that liberates and frees us from our own bondages, that liberates and frees us from our own addictions. And Lord God, we are now addicted to Jesus. Mm -hmm. You are our addiction. We are connected to you. We, are, we have you in our veins and in our blood and in our soul and in our spirit and in our heart. And because you are present, God is present in us everywhere we go. Oh, and you said you'd never leave us or forsake us. You said you'd be our God and we would be your very own people. I thank you that I'm owned by you, the great king of all the universe. Hallelujah. We are yours, Lord, and you are ours. We belong to each other. We have the greatest of all gifts, the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless each one to go throughout this week with this revelation knowledge that they will not interpret things as they see them, but as your word interprets and, and defines them. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.